I recently saw that Amazon launched their very own multivitamin supplement. So I went on their site and checked out the product. What I found out was pretty shocking. So in this video, we will analyze the multivitamin and its nutrition label. I will be as straightforward and honest as possible with you and tell you what I liked, what I didn't like, and why I think this is a pretty bad multivitamin. Okay, so this is the product. It's called Solimo Adult Multivitamin, and it's actually vitamin gummies and not pills. For me personally, this is the first red flag. I don't like vitamin gummies. They always come with added sugar and other ingredients that you don't need in a vitamin supplement. But I guess some people don't like swallowing pills or having to take tablets. So I can kind of understand it. It says here that the multivitamin contributes to maintenance of good health, is vegetarian and gluten-free. Let's see if any of that is actually true by looking at the nutrition label. Now, when you first look at nutrition labels of multivitamins, they always look super crowded and kind of confusing at first. To keep this video simple, I will only focus on the vitamins and minerals in this product, and we will ignore the other ingredients that you can find on the right side. Because what matters in the end is the vitamin content and the mineral content of a multivitamin, right? I will also ignore the calories and carbs in this product. Like I said before, most vitamin gummies come with added sugars, but this amount is so small that it's negligible. Let's first talk about the overall nutrient content of this multivitamin and then talk about each vitamin and mineral in more detail. So the first thing I'm seeing here is that all the nutrients included are included in a fairly low dose. While I personally like low dose supplements because they lower your risk of having any side effects or of overdosing, in this case, it's definitely not enough. I mean, the dosages here are super low. Most nutrients don't even reach 100% of your RDI. For example, the three milligrams of zinc that they added isn't even a third of your RDI. I will talk about this later, but you won't notice any effect with that. Another problem of having very low doses in a multivitamin that has a lot of nutrients is that different nutrients affect each other when it comes to absorption. So the more nutrients you have in a product, the lower the individual absorption of each nutrient will be. Now, you can kind of counteract this with having higher doses, but in this case, they didn't. So the small zinc dose that they have here will actually be even smaller in reality when you account for absorption or lack of it. So I'm wondering, did they include these low doses for safety reasons or because they wanted to cut costs? Keep this in mind, because at a later point, when we look at other nutrients, there are some more indicators that they did it for cost reasons and not for your safety concern. Another thing that's kind of weird is that even though they included most vitamins, they only have three minerals in here, zinc, iodine, and sodium. And the sodium is so small that it's probably just the natural sodium that is found in the other ingredients that they listed on the right side. Now, I'm not saying that you should put every last nutrient into a multivitamin, but when you're using such small doses and then only two to three minerals, why even bother in the first place? It doesn't really make sense. Okay, with that out of the way, let's now talk about the individual vitamins and minerals. Let's see if they actually use quality raw materials or if they were trying to cut costs. First is vitamin A. Now, vitamin A is important for eye health, growth in children, and overall immunity. And it also works together with zinc, so it makes sense that they added both. The RDI for vitamin A is 900 micrograms for men and 700 micrograms for women. And the upper intake that you shouldn't cross is about 3,000 micrograms for both men and women per day. This is around 10,000 international units, and doses higher than that have been linked to growth defects when pregnant women took too much of a vitamin A supplement. So you definitely want to take that into account when you decide to supplement vitamin A. But the problem with this product is that their dosage doesn't fall into any of these ranges. 390 micrograms is too low to avoid deficiency, and it's not even close to toxicity. So I really don't understand what they were thinking. As for raw materials, retinal acetate is a synthetic form of vitamin A. This is okay, I guess, because you won't find natural vitamin A in a supplement. The, really, the only alternative you have is cod liver oil or eating beef liver, for example. 
Those will provide you with natural, organically bound vitamin A. All other multivitamins or synthetic supplements usually use retinol acetate or retinol palmitate. On to vitamin C. Here we have the same low dose problem as we saw in vitamin A. The RDI for vitamin C is 75 milligrams for women and 90 milligrams for men per day. Now this RDI is very controversial because it's already too low to do anything but avoid scurvy. But this multivitamin doesn't even cover that. 60 milligrams of vitamin C really won't do anything and it's kind of laughable to be honest. Another thing that I noticed is that they used ascorbic acid as a vitamin C source. Now, just like in the case of vitamin A, this is the synthetic form of a vitamin. Ascorbic acid is made in a lab and it's not what you get from food when you eat a food high in vitamin C. Now, online, there are endless discussions over which is better. So ascorbic acid, the synthetic form or the natural form of vitamin C. All I can tell you is that if you just want the antioxidant properties of vitamin C, then ascorbic acid is fine. But if you also want to enjoy the other benefits, like phytonutrients or vitamin C's ability to increase ceruloplasmin, which is one of the most important proteins in your body, then you want to go for natural vitamin C. This is usually found in supplements that contain acerola berries or kamu kamu. Because you always want to make sure that these berries aren't high in pesticides or haven't been treated in any way, of course, the supplement would be a lot more expensive if they used natural materials instead of ascorbic acid. So again, I think they only did it for cost reasons. Third, we have vitamin D, and it's an even more complex topic than vitamin C. Most people think that vitamin D is some type of miracle cure for all kinds of symptoms and illnesses. But the problem is that they often confuse high vitamin D levels that you get naturally from sunlight or consuming foods high in vitamin D to consuming synthetic vitamin D supplements. I personally am not a big fan of isolated vitamin D supplements, so the colocalsferol that they're using in this product. And that's because your natural vitamin D that you get from the sun or from cod liver oil is sulfated while the isolated synthetic form is not. This sulfation makes the vitamin D somewhat water soluble and is a lot better for your calcium metabolism. I explain everything in more detail in my video on how to take vitamin D correctly, but please make sure to not go into this blindly. There have been some serious side effects from vitamin D toxicity. I also have a video on that. So in this case, I actually like the low dose of vitamin D that they're using. But again, I'm assuming they didn't do it for your safety. They did it to make the product cheaper for them to produce. And last, at least in terms of fat soluble vitamins, we have vitamin E. Now they use alpha tocopherol as do most other supplements, but keep in mind that there are seven other compounds of vitamin E that are found naturally in your diet. You have four tocopherols and four tocotrienols. Alpha tocopherol is the most potent and best studied. But you always want to make sure that you have a healthy balance of all of them. So I personally prefer to supplement all eight types. And there are products that are natural vitamin E complexes that deliver all of them. But that's just my preference. In general, most supplements will just use alpha tocopherol and not the other forms. So I'm giving them a pass here. Now that we have the vitamins A, C, D and E covered, let's talk about the B vitamins, which they split up. For some reason, they didn't include all of the B vitamins. They only included B6, folic acid, so vitamin B9, biotin, so vitamin B7, B12, and B5. And down below, they also listed in Sotol, which used to be called vitamin B8. But I'm not sure why they left out vitamin B1, B2, and B3. Because of time reasons, I will go over each individual B vitamin very quickly, otherwise the video will get too long. First, vitamin B6. They used pyridoxin hydrochloride, which is fine. It's what most other supplement brands also use. There are some people that have problems converting the normal pyridoxin hydrochloride to the metabolically active form of P5P. These are usually people that have pyroluria and they need to take P5P directly instead of the standard form that still has to be converted by the body to become active. But it's fine, I guess, for most people. Next, vitamin B9, so folate. 
The folic acid here that they used is not natural vitamin B9. It's the synthetic form that still has to be converted by the body to become active, just like in the case of vitamin B6. Now, this can be a problem for some people that have an MTHFR defect, which is a gene mutation. But the topic of folate, folic acid, and methylfolate is so complex that I won't go into it now. At some point, I will record a video on it because it does require me to go into quite a lot of detail. Just know that, again, they use the synthetic and cheapest form of a vitamin that they could use. And then we have vitamin B12. This is known as cobalamin, and there are different forms of vitamin B12 out there. This could be adenosylcobalamin, it could be methylcobalamin, or hydroxocobalamin. And then there's also cyanocobalamin, which they use. It's the cheapest and lowest quality form of vitamin B12. And just like folic acid, it has to undergo several conversions to become active, and along the process, some of it will be lost. So it's not very potent. In fact, using cyanocobalamin in a multivitamin or in any supplement for that matter, for me is a dead giveaway that it's a bad product. Because we have so many better alternatives available that are just slightly more expensive for the manufacturer. So when a brand is using cyanocobalamin, then either they just want to cut costs and give you the cheapest product that they can, or they don't know any better, which might be even worse. Next are biotin, pentothenic acid, and inosotol, which are fine, so let's go on to the minerals to save some time. Like I said in the beginning, the only minerals that they have is zinc, iodine, and sodium, and the sodium content is so small that it probably came from the other ingredients. You have to declare sodium on a product, that's why they included it. It's basically by law from the FDA. Now, iodine is super important for thyroid health. The name of the thyroid hormone T4 actually stands for tyrosine, which is an amino acid that is bound to four molecules of iodine. So it is good that they put it in here because a lot of people forget about iodine when they think of their supplement regimen. But, and this is very important, you always also want to make sure that you get plenty of selenium because selenium is a natural synergist of iodine. So it works together with it and makes sure that you have a healthy balance of the two minerals in your thyroid. If you take a lot of iodine and forget to take selenium, then you can run into problems. Now this won't happen here because as always, the dose is so small that you won't notice anything, but it's just something that I wanted to mention. Again, why even bother with the nutrient if you're only going to put in minuscule amounts? And lastly, we have zinc. Zinc is super important for overall health, immunity, and hormone balance. Many people nowadays are zinc deficient without them knowing, and they also have too little zinc in comparison to too much copper in their tissue. Unfortunately, like I said before, the zinc content in this supplement won't do you any good. Three milligrams is nothing, and you might as well leave it out. So at this point, it's really just nutrition label cosmetics. <sighs> okay, now that we went through all the nutrients, you can probably guess my verdict. I do not recommend this product. Most ingredients are either too low dosed or low quality when we have better alternatives available. I don't know what the nutritionists working for Amazon were thinking, but this formula doesn't make any sense at all. Maybe that's why it's no longer available for purchase. Who knows? Now, before I wrap up this video, I do have to disclose my own bias. I'm generally not a big fan of any type of multivitamin because they're often sold as a quick fix for your vitamin and mineral deficiencies. But what you have to understand is that it's not all about vitamin deficiencies. Often more important are vitamin and mineral imbalances. For example, a lot of people have too much calcium in relation to magnesium, or like I said before, too much copper in the tissue when compared to zinc. A multivitamin that has all of these nutrients won't do you any good because it doesn't fix any of the nutrient imbalances. All it does is to ensure that you don't run into the most severe deficiencies. Unfortunately, most people don't know this, so they end up buying a multivitamin thinking that they're covered when it comes to their micronutrients. This isn't Amazon's fault, of course, but they still could have made a better product. If you want to learn about these nutrient relationships and their interactions, 
please check out my other videos. I have videos that go into much more detail about all of the vitamins and minerals that we talked in this video. I hope you like my review. I also hope that I saved you from a bad purchase and I see you in the next one.